Welcome to dual enrollment at Georgia Piedmont Technical College for spring 2021. We're excited to welcome you to your first semester as a dual enrollment student. And to any continuing or returning students, we welcome you back. My name is Kristen Courtkill, and I'm the Director of High School Initiatives with GPTC. And I have the distinct pleasure of working with our students and school partners throughout DeKalb, Newton, and Rockdale counties. This orientation session is designed to give you the important information that you need to get started this semester in the dual enrollment program. There are also more detailed presentations on some of the topics we'll be discussing in this video on the main orientation webpage. Make sure you take some time and review those presentations after this one. Take notes as you go, and if you get to the end and anything was unclear, please reach out to the dual enrollment office. We're here to support you on this journey. Before we go any further, I want to make sure you're aware of a change to the laws governing dual enrollment that was passed in spring of 2020. Dual enrollment funding is now capped at 30 funded hours. Students in 11th and 12th grade are eligible to take academic classes like English, math, and science and CTAE courses that align with the pathway. 10th grade students are eligible for CTAE courses only. And those are classes like computers or business or welding, etc. Funding is for approved courses only, and these courses are listed in the Georgia Futures Directory. Courses that are not approved are not eligible for funding. After students have used their 30 funded hours, they may be eligible to receive HOPE grant funding to take classes in technical fields. Students cannot repeat classes due to not passing or withdrawing from classes, and students who withdraw from two classes are no longer eligible to receive dual enrollment funding. And this is for the entire dual enrollment program, not just for classes taken at GPTC. All of these rule changes are for receiving dual enrollment funding. Students do have the option of paying for classes themselves. If you pay for the class yourself, it's up to the high school to determine if the class will count on your high school transcript. Before registering, please make sure you've communicated your class request with your high school counselor. I also encourage you to review the Georgia Futures website to see more detailed information on dual enrollment funding eligibility, view your Georgia Futures status, and search the approved course directory. Remember, not all courses receive dual enrollment funding. And even courses that do receive dual enrollment funding may have additional fees that are the responsibility of the student. If you have any questions, please make sure you review the Georgia Futures website or speak to your dual enrollment coordinator. Now, let's get started on your dual enrollment experience. The dual enrollment staff is here to support you. I have already introduced myself and there are three other team members who will be working with you as you continue on in the program. While we are all here to assist you, you do have an assigned staff member based on your high school. If you attend a DeKalb charter school, private school, or a homeschool student, or if you are a DeKalb County School District student, Mrs. Thomas is your assigned coordinator. If you are a DeKalb County School student or a Decatur High School student, Mr. Igbonaguam is your assigned coordinator. And if you live in Newton or Rockdale counties, Mrs. Mullinax is your assigned coordinator. Your coordinator will be assisting you as you navigate through the dual enrollment program, registering you for classes each semester, and communicating with your school counselors about your progress. If you ever have a question or a concern while in the dual enrollment program, your, com your coordinator would be the person you reach out to. They will either assist you or point you to the right person or department who can. I'd like to share some information about GPTC as you prepare this semester. GPTC is one of the oldest technical colleges in Georgia. Covering a three county district of DeKalb, Newton, and Rockdale counties, we have a large and diverse student body that represents the community that we serve. Students choosing GPTC look at our open access policy meaning that students are accepted into our college, but placement scores determine course eligibility. Students can also take classes at a GPTC campus through GPTC online 
and our high school students attending a partnering high school that offers classes on their campus. With agreements of all the colleges in the Technical College System of Georgia guaranteeing transfer of credits, partnership with the University System of Georgia guaranteeing transfer of 28 core classes, and additional agreements with other colleges and universities, both in state and out of state, students can feel confident that their experience at GPTC will set them up for the future. When you applied to GPTC, one of the questions in the application was what program of study you were going to pursue. Many of you probably selected the Interdisciplinary Studies AAS degree to take general education classes. You may also have an interest in a particular subject area, like criminal justice or nursing, and chose a specialty regarding that. Whatever your pathway is, there are different levels of coursework that are offered. A TCC is specialized curriculum. Some TCCs are as short as one semester that prepare you for a career. Diplomas are similar to a TCC in that there are specialized programs in specific career fields, but can take up to two years to complete. An associate's degree is a program that can transfer into a four-year college or university or prepare you for a career. Whatever your program of study is will guide what classes you take while enrolled. If you signed up to do a computer programming degree, you're not going to be enrolling in a welding class. Just like if you signed up to be an automotive program, it would not make sense for you to take a cosmetology class. Your programs of study help keep you on track towards your credential and your high school graduation progress. Now, let's get ready for classes. In order to register for classes, you must have a Georgia Futures funding application on file or have communicated with your dual enrollment coordinator that you plan on paying for classes yourself. It is important that you register for classes with your dual enrollment coordinator every semester and for all schedule changes. This is how we can better ensure you're taking approved classes and are on track to complete your degree. You're able to view the class schedule in Banner Web to see what classes are available to you. But please make sure you're turning in your schedule request to your dual enrollment coordinators. At GPTC, academics and technology go hand in hand. Every student who has been accepted and registered for classes has a GPTC account that has been assigned to you. This is information that came via email with your acceptance to the college or may have come in a postcard in the mail. GPTC uses a single sign-on where one username and password grants you access to all of your accounts. It is important that you are logging into your GPTC email and other accounts regularly. A little bit about each of the programs that GPTC uses. Your official student records are located in Banner Web. This is where you're able to see your course schedule view your final grades at the end of term, access your personal information, and other resources available to you. During the semester, all classes utilize Blackboard for accessing homework, assignments, and any e-learning or textbooks built into the class. Navigate is a student portal to communicate with your advisors and other staff members, map out your credentials, and see your student information. I encourage you to spend some time setting up these accounts and making sure they're active before the semester begins. On the main orientation webpage, there is an in-depth tutorial on setting up your accounts and walking through the different platforms, especially Blackboard. I encourage you to review that video as you will use your GPTC accounts extensively throughout your time in the dual enrollment program. Beginning fall 2020, many GPTC courses will have textbooks built into the class through Blackboard. This is called OER, or Open Educational Resources. When you access your class in Blackboard, you will see instructions about how to access the book. If you're taking a class that requires a physical textbook, that information will also be posted in your course information in Blackboard or the class syllabus. Dual enrollment students who do require a physical textbook receive that from the GPTC bookstore. You will submit an email request to the bookstore and they will send you instructions on how to retrieve your books. 
If you do receive a physical book that is rented to you for the duration of the semester, you'd have to return it at the end of term and in good condition. If you do not, you will have a financial hold on your record. If you have any confusion about what your materials are, please review the course information in Blackboard and the class syllabus. Also, please be advised, you may be in a class that requires you to purchase materials that are not part of dual enrollment funding, like uniforms or special equipment such as cosmetology kits. If you have any questions about your classes, please contact the dual enrollment office. Make sure you're keeping track of important dates and deadlines for GPTC, as these dates may be different from your high school calendar. The spring semester starts on January 11th, and that is the first day that you're able to log into Blackboard and begin participating in your courses. January 17th is the last day to make any schedule changes. After the 17th, the schedule is locked. You also have a requirement to complete what's called a no-show assignment in the first week of the semester, or you will be dropped from non-participation. January 31st is the final payment deadline. If you are taking a class as a self-paced student, or if, you have a if you're taking a class that has a lab fee that's not covered by dual enrollment funding, like a science class or a technical class, you do need to make payment by January 31st. Please make sure that you make note of these important dates and deadlines, and then when class begins, to review your course syllabus and make sure you're making note of all important dates built within your class. And remember, again, these dates and deadlines are going to be different from your high school calendar. Every semester, we will review your academic progress. To be in good standing, you have to maintain at least a 2.0 GPA and successfully complete 67% of your class attempts, meaning you're passing your classes with a C or better and not failing or withdrawing. If you do, fall below good academic standing, you will have one semester to raise your GPA or improve your progress. If at the end of that semester you have not done that, you will be suspended from classes. Remember, there has been a change to dual enrollment where students cannot repeat classes and receive funding, and you cannot withdraw from two or more classes or you will be considered ineligible to receive additional funding. Also, that's important to know, 30 credits that you receive funding are for all of your attempts, not just classes that you pass. So it's very important that you do well in every class. These are part of your college transcript and can negatively impact you down the road even after you graduate from high school. So please make sure you're maintaining a good grade point average and successfully completing your class attempts. Now a little bit of information about some campus services available to you. As a dual enrollment student, you have access to all of the student services and activities that any other GPTC student does. Your GPTC accounts are how the college will communicate with you and how you will access your coursework throughout the year. Right now, with classes being fully remote, it is even more important that you maintain access to these accounts. If at any point you have technology issues, make sure you report them right away to tech support. More detailed information about this is also discussed in the technology orientation video on the main orientation webpage. At the college level, students who receive accommodations inside or out of the classroom must self-identify with special services. Your IEP or 504 plan or any other arrangement you may have in place with your high school does not automatically transfer to the college. If you do not register with the special services offices, your accommodations will not be in place. Please be advised, services begin once all documentation is submitted and complete, and services are not retroactive meaning if you opt not to register with special services at the beginning of term, but decide later to turn in paperwork. You cannot go back to the assignments that you may have already happened to do any kind of makeup work. If you're a student with an IEP or 504 plan, please make note of Ms. Greenwood's contact information. 
She also has a video on the Main Orientation webpage that goes into more detail about the process to register with special services to establish accommodations. As a JPTC student, you have access to all the campus amenities available to students, including the library. Library services and librarians are available to you as you begin your coursework. As a student, you have access to both the in-person resources in the library, as well as online databases and books throughout the state to assist with research and writing assignments for your courses. The library also has a library loan program for students to check out laptops for a short term basis. I encourage you to watch the library services video on the main orientation webpage for more details on how to access the library. What we've talked about today and much more is written in the student handbook and the college catalog. These two items are found on the college website and are important tools as you navigate through GPTC. Please take some time and review these documents. Consider them to be your contact between the college and the student, and they outline your rights and responsibilities. Also, even though you're still enrolled in high school, you are considered college students. There is a law called FERPA that quite simply puts restrictions on what information we can share with anyone other than the student or educational partners, regardless of your age. This means if a parent or guardian calls and asks us what your grades are or wants a copy of your schedule, we cannot share that information. There is a FERPA waiver that is on the GPTC website that students can complete that gives access to the student record. So students, if you want your parent or guardian to be able to call up and ask questions or advocate on your behalf, please make sure you fill out that FERPA form. This has been a lot of information. I hope that you feel better prepared to start this semester. I do encourage you to review the main orientation webpage to see some of those other videos and presentations that we spoke about. I also encourage you to review the Georgia Futures website and go into more detail about the changes to dual enrollment, eligibility, and funding. The more you know, the better prepared you are. If you still have questions, please reach out to the Dual Enrollment Office at dualenrollment at gptc.edu. That's the quickest way to have your questions answered or to arrange a time for a phone call or video appointment to meet with a Dual Enrollment Coordinator for a more in-depth advisement appointment. I thank you for your time here today. We're so glad that you're joining the Dual Enrollment Program at GPTC, and I wish you the most wonderful semester.